do you notice that your symptoms are very positional in nature? You're fine when you stand, but when you sit down, it hurts. Or when you bend over, it hurts. Or when you get into a car, it hurts. Or you might have moments of pins and needles or areas of numbness, or even something called persistent genital arousal disorder, where you feel this random, incredibly awful arousal sensation that's also quite painful. Those are all symptoms of muscles that are squeezing nerves. So I've had two significant episodes of pudendal neuralgia. The first one happened after I sat for a very long period of time one weekend. I think I, I sat almost for 12 hours in a row and I was working on IC stuff and then I was doing other stuff. And as I was sitting there, I started feeling a vibration in my left tush. It felt like I was sitting on a cell phone on vibrate. And so, and I, and I blew it off. I ignored it and I continued to sit. Whoa, what a mistake. What a mistake that was. And I sat for another hour or two as this vibration got worse and worse and worse and worse until finally I didn't have a choice. I had to get up and move around. Well, that ended up being a really significant injury to that nerve. I just sat for way too long. And after it persisted for a couple of months, I went to my gynecologist, explained it, and they attempted nerve blocks, which really did not work. And as I sit here now, I have a little tiny vibration. Um, my, what, the way I approach this now is I know that once it starts vibrating, I've got to sit up and move. I cannot continue to sit here for any long period of time without risking traumatizing that nerve a little bit more. So anytime you have positional symptoms, especially pain on sitting, we're really going to consider the concept of a body position compromising a nerve, a muscle that's compromising a nerve. I will also say that because I, I tend to be very long and slender and I had lost a lot of weight and I literally just did not have a lot of, a lot of tush at that point in time. And so whenever I sat, I, was, I wasn't protected well. I didn't have a lot of fat down there. And so I was sitting on just bone and muscle and nerve. Um, what helped me tremendously was using a chair cushion. And we happen to have a lot of really good chair cushions over on the IC Network website. Now, the other time that I had an interesting event with pudendal neuralgia was I started feeling a pin pricking sensation in my labia on the outside of my skin. And I'd never had that before. It's all on the outside, kind of at the pubic hairline. And over a period of a week, it went from the front all the way to the back and it intensified. And then it was on both sides. And I can't even say I noticed a correlation with sitting and standing. To me, I just felt like I was being poked here, 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 here with pins. So in my mind, I'm thinking this has got to be a yeast infection. So I go to urgent care for gynecology. The doctor goes, wow, you're bright red. He took a little swab. He goes, yeah, I think you might have yeast. They put me on Diflucan, did nothing did nothing. Two weeks later, I end up at my own OBGYN. She looks at me. She goes, I think you have eczema from a mini pad. So she put me on steroids for six weeks. And I have to say, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. I was terrible. And finally, I just said, listen, I want to talk with a pelvic pain specialist because I'm part of Kaiser Permanente, which is an HMO here in California. Well, the pelvic pain specialist uh, was fantastic. She looks at my record and she goes, Jill, don't you know what you have? And I'm like, no, what is this? She goes, it's a pudendal neuralgia. Your muscles are tight again. And I'm like, really? I had no idea the tight muscles could cause that pin pricking sensation on, so far on the outside of your skin and for a woman on the libya. And she goes, yep, this is, we see this all the time. You've got tight muscles that are squeezing the nerve. So I need you to go back to physical therapy, which of course I did. I, I made a, an immediate appointment with my pelvic floor physical therapist. She goes, yeah, you're really, really tight. Absolutely. But the other thing that she gave me was a topical 
estrogen lidocaine gel to use on my skin to calm the nerves down on my skin. And wow, between the two, that helped tremendously. And so when we think about treating pudendal neuralgia, we're really doing two things. We wanna to try to figure out what's compromising the nerve, like sitting for a long period of time. We're gonna to try to release those muscles, right? That makes clear sense. But we also have to do things that will try to calm down that now very, very irritated nerve. And so you can use topical applications like a lidocaine cream or a lidocaine gel. Um, or you can use some medications that will help to calm nerves down like gabapentin or even the over-the-counter supplement palmitoyl ethanolamide Peora, which is something that I use fairly regularly. So two-pronged approach, release the muscles, relax the nerves. We have an incredible resource for patients who struggle with pudendal neuralgia. This book, Breaking Through Chronic Pelvic Pain, is just a master class in pelvic anatomy, but his discussion of nerve compression injuries, double crush injuries, and how that affects other tissues in the pelvis is second to none. So if you struggle with pudendal neuralgia, I would strongly encourage you to get this book. You can find this in the IC Network store. Again, it's Breaking Through Chronic Pelvic Pain, by Dr. Jerome Y. Take home summary. Pudendal neuralgia occurs when a nerve is compressed or squeezed by a muscle or ligament. PNE can occur after a pelvic injury or trauma. PNE can cause severe pelvic pain that is worsened by sitting or body position. PNE can cause many different symptoms, including pins and needles, numbness, vibration, shocking sensations, or PGAD. PNE treatment focuses on releasing the nerve through physical therapy and calming the nerves with nerve blocks and or medication. Physical therapy should include both internal and external treatment. Surgery is rarely performed today in favor of less invasive treatments. Self-care is essential. Patients should avoid sitting on hard surfaces. Use chair cushions that won't compress the nerves. Find these at icnsale.com. Avoid sitting on hard bicycle seats. Avoid hard leather seats in cars or use a chair cushion to reduce trauma. Suggested chair cushions. The Sun Cloud Travel Cushion is our most recommended cushion for patients who have pain in the crotch area, including their urethra, rectum, vulva, prostate, and testicles. The EHOB Waffle Cushion is ideal for patients who have pain to the left or right of the crotch by the sit bones or in the deeper gluteal muscles. It is my go-to cushion for most work days. Find more cushions at icnshop.com forward slash chair hyphen cushion. Of course, we would love to have you join our live support group meetings on Sunday. Recordings are also available if you cannot attend live meetings. Please note in the summer of 2024, Jill will be having surgery and so meetings will be suspended until late summer.